Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Jerry Cooey. I'm Deborah Nelson. Thanks for joining us. And uh, once again, we're sitting high atop of the corporate headquarters of Santa Rosa Week TV, overlooking the beautiful Blackwater Bay. And, Which, for uh, some reason, is at the same level as our 18 story. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing what you can do with uh, camera angles. Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, the, um, you know, we, we, we continue to, uh, I, I guess, almost get forced into having conversations about Team Santa Rosa. because yeah. we, we it's not our fault. We, <laughs> folks, it's not our fault. I, I, I think I've made it very clear what I think about it. Wipe the slate clean with, of all of the employees, change the name, and start over again. Um, and my point was, why are we throwing money at that at all? Exactly. It's a waste of money no matter how you, what you call it. Right. And, uh, uh, and I'm the liberal, tax and spend liberal saying that. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll back up a little bit to the October 6th County Commission meeting to give you a, a point of reference. Um, I felt that Commissioner Cole, Commissioner Melvin, Commissioner Williamson, and Commissioner Lyncher, um, I felt like they gave pretty good direction. The October 6th meeting was where a team was supposed to come in and explain why they should be um, have their contract extended. Right. And um, um, and, and especially Commissioner, Commissioner Lyncher, at, at the end, he took the floor one final time and said, we need new leadership. We need a new name change. Uh, uh, he said we need change. We're going to need changes. Yeah, we're we're, need we're, changes. We're, 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 we, you know, there's, there's, it's, it's a target-rich environment. You know, we, we there, there's some things that have to be done here, and I, I, I felt like the direction was, was, pretty understandable. Team Santa Rosa was supposed to go back, and the board was supposed to hit, meet, and they were right. supposed to bring at the, I think it was two, two weeks later, county commission meeting, bring back a. Re a report on what they were going to do exactly to change right and so on that on the um, October meeting this this recent County Commission meeting um, we see on the um, on the agenda is a discussion about economic development stuff uh, I you know I'll tell you folks uh, I, I, I felt like it was very well explained to Dave Hawksing uh, the, the, the chairman of Team Santa Rosa, who, by the way, lives in Escambia County and is also a member of the Pensacola Chamber of Commerce. That's just a little side note. Uh, I thought it had been, been made very clear to him and uh, so that the board would know which, which direction. Uh, I'll tell you what I was expecting to see at, at this recent county commission meeting. Well, we should say they, they did hold that board meeting. Right. Team Santa Rosa held that board meeting. Um, I was there. Right. It was a, a, a couple days later, it seems like. I don't remember the date. And um, they talked about become, you know, forming partnerships with Florida's Great Northwest, of course. Right. And, uh, and the Pensacola, Pensacola Chamber. Pensacola Chamber. They talked about uh, trying to draw jobs in regionally, operating as a regional Entity. And, it, and they just kind of skipped right over the guidance that the Board of County Commissioners had well, given Well, they said, we need, a, we need to hire a consultant to help us figure out what our vision is for the agency. And, the, right. and they'll tell us what kind of changes we should make. And that would have been $50,000. And they seemed pretty certain they were going to recommend that. But apparently when the commission meeting rolled around, that was not. They had changed their mind. That was not actually recommended. Uh, you know, which is probably a good thing for them. I, you know, it's it, it's really not frustrating to me anymore. It's it's just become laughable. Uh, if if five county commissioners, who sign the checks for Team Santa Rosa, if the, if they want to be uh, uh, embarrassed and and made fun of like Team Santa Rosa has done to them, or the board the board of Team Santa Rosa. You know that's it. They're they're all big boys. Well, they and they wear big boy pants. But. They haven't made fun of them, but they <laughs> it could certainly be argued they've been embarrassed. Yeah, it's, the, it's, it's just it's just um it's just unbelievable. Uh, just a few days earlier, as Deborah said, they were all gung ho. We're going before the board of county commissioners. We're gonna we're gonna ask. To, well, our plan is we want to hire a consultant. 
and um, to figure out their vision. To figure out their the vision, because, which is interesting. I mean, you would think ca the county commissioners would have that vision, or the agency itself, the board would be able to formulate a vision. I mean, I. I was wondering why you need an outside fifty thousand dollar consultant right. to figure something like that. Well, I, you know, um, folks, I, I don't know about you, but I but I've had enough of the spending over there. Uh, for for them to even uh, discuss that in an open meeting, and I, and I do want to make this point, folks. Um, this is an official board. The Team Santa Rosa board is an official board, uh, sanctioned by the board of county commissioners. They did not have a proper quorum at that board meeting. They did not have enough people to take an official vote. Oh, they didn't. They didn't take one. They did not take right. it for that reason. So, so basically, it was the the thought of coming to the next county commission meeting and discussing spending fifty thousand dollars for a consultant really wasn't the wishes of the board. It was just what. The chairman wanted right. to. Right. Well, they, they, they never ended up doing that to begin with. Right. Uh, but they, I think they did form a um, subcommittee to study the issue. Right. Within and, the and, and, I, and I haven't had an opportunity yet to look real hard at that quote unquote subcommittee. Um, we're, da we're dancing back in the gray again over the Sunshine Law. And, um, well, no, I think I, I'm pretty sure I got a meeting announced. They're, they're open. Those are open They're, they're going to yeah, have them yeah. open. Yeah. Yeah, that's. So, well, 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 I hope, I hope that they've learned their lesson on the sunshine laws. Um, the next thing that occurred, and and folks, you're probably going to be as shocked as I am about this. Um, I, I'll tell you, Deborah and uh, folks, we, we we want you to see this. I, I was really expecting of. We've made a decision, and this is what we're going to do with Team Santa Rosa. So, we'll let you watch the videotape, and then we're going to come back and discuss it after that. Uh, today is my 24th day as the new chairman of Team Santa Rosa. It's been a busy month. Uh, we have a number of things to brief you on this morning. Uh, as chairman, I have taken the leadership responsibility in dealing with the issues that came up at the workshop that we had together in this room this month. Uh, well, the staff stays focused on job creation. There's an awful lot going on right now in economic development opportunities in our county, and uh, seems pretty busy. Uh, as a direct result of the meeting that we had here, uh, two weeks ago we had a meeting of the Team Santa Rosa Board of Directors. Uh, as you know, we're a sunshine board, so we cannot talk amongst ourselves. We really couldn't discuss this until uh, two weeks ago. Uh, out of that meeting, uh, we appointed a, a committee, a planning committee of people that are working on the issues that came up in the, uh, the workshop. And we'll be getting back to you later in the fall with the specifics on that. Um, Sandy Anderson is our executive director, and she has a number of things to brief you on uh, now. You are quick. You never quit. Um, just wanted to kind of let you know what's in the pipeline. If you could put the slide up. Roger, without it, I know it just comes up. There you go. And there's two slides, there's this one, and then there's a second one. And what these are are projects that are in the, in the pipeline. And y'all hear us talk about the pipeline a lot, and we've been very fortunate to keep things in the pipeline. Because if you don't put things in, you can't have it come out the end. And uh, we, we've talked about this before. These are active projects within the last 90 days. You can see through there, there was a couple of them that we have been eliminated just last week. Uh, one because a better building in the southeast came up, and then another one we're not sure. We may never know why we were eliminated on that one. But we will continue to work these projects until the day we get the call and say we are coming or we are not coming. Uh, somebody asked us the other day, says, what's your uh, rate of um, how many come out the end compared to what go in the end? And we did some quick numbers and found out it's about 10%. But we're real excited about the 10%. And if you look at all these projects and you think of 10%, we probably got one or two that can have potential to come out the end. So another thing I wanted to do is uh, hand out, I got 10, did you bring? Oh, he's got it, okay. And we can give one to Tony and, um, anyway, please. Did everybody up here get one? This is the final of the Whiting Aviation Park Master Plan update. 
and uh, you'll see on the, the June update, uh, Dave just brought that to my attention today, the final draft was in June. Since then, we have had county engineering review it, we have had NAS Writing Field reviewed it, we have reviewed it as economic development organization, and it is now finalized. On November the 10th, at your board meeting here, Atkins, Atkins will be here, the old Pest Buckley will be here to give you a presentation. My hope is that you all have a chance between now and then to look over it. And if you've got any questions, um, Jeff Helm should be here, Tom Rhoda, and his folks. So they will be able to answer any questions you've got on it. Uh, this is an interesting tool for us because now we have something a little bit more tangible to send to folks. I mean, this is a heck of a presentation when we send it to some of our prospects. And there's two of them I will tell you that are on that list you saw earlier that will be receiving these. We're trying. We always are looking for the next step, and uh, I think that y'all even said that back at the workshop that if you don't know where you're going, you're not sure how to get there. This gives us a true plan. If you look through here, you've got the actual layout that people can see of what Whiting Aviation Park is going to look like. It gives the Navy a perspective of where the taxiways are going to go, where the gate's going to be, how they will do their air operations. It gives us the tools to say these are the types of aircraft that can be landing and utilize our new aviation park with respect to the south field. So it gives us a plan of where to go. It's got cost estimates in it, which is what we're using now if we sit at the table with UWF and the $10 million that they are receiving this year to be able to say this is what we need to be able to get the first tenant in to land a plane. As I've mentioned before, if you're a vehicular use company, trucks, cars, now you can go into the park. If you are a helo company, you can go into the park. But if you have to land a plane, then we are still not there with our infrastructure. And this gives us everything we need to go ahead and start moving in that direction. Um, wanted to give you just a couple of tidbits. I hope everybody saw the good news that unemployment dropped from 10 to 9.3. I'd like to get really excited about that. I think the next couple months will tell. We don't know if that was an anomaly. But uh, that relates to about 600 jobs. So that, that was a really interesting drop in uh, unemployment. So we'll track it over the next few months. As, uh, you know, I, I, y'all heard from Rick Harper before. He says, um, you know, we have hit rock bottom with the economy. Now, we're going to bounce along the bottom for a little bit. So this may be just a uh, part of that bouncing along the bottom. Wanted to bring you up today, um, not only are we doing the planning committee that uh, Dave talked about, but we are also involved in a steering committee that had its first meeting two weeks ago with Pensacola Chamber. And what we're looking at, we have four people from team board of directors, four people from the chamber board of directors, and they comprise a steering committee that's looking at how we do some strategic planning together as an MSA as opposed to two individual counties. So we're real excited about the potential with that. I think you all heard about that gosh, back in February when we talked about it. And uh, we actually developed a grant application to the Federal Economic Development um, Association and um, did not get it. it. It took us several months to find out that we did not get it. So now we're back on track to find out what type of plan do we want, how much is it going to cost, and how are we going to accomplish it. So you'll be hearing more coming out of that steering committee. Uh, I mentioned that uh, one of the projects at the Whiting Aviation Park is at the table with UWF as far as a portion of that $10 million. We have two projects now that are with Rick Harper for his review to look at before any checks can be written, we have to get those companies to sign their commitment. And uh, we believe we're close with that. But again, until the fat lady sings, you don't receive any checks. But we are at the table. Just wanted to make sure that y'all understood that we are an integral part of that process that Rick Harper and his new organization at UWF are going through. I also wanted to tell you about the focus event last week. This is our annual event. Florida's Great Northwest, along with the 16 EDOs in the 16 counties, we work together to provide an event where we bring national leaders in site consulting to Northwest Florida. We brought in 15 consultants this year, and again, these are all the upper tier site consultants. And um, Shannon and I were both there, Dave was there, Jerry Goldstein went with us. And um, we had FaceTime, all four of us, in front of each of those 12 consultants. 
to talk about what we've got here. We made a lot of really good connections. Um, four of them were very interested in what we are doing, and we have information in more specific going out to them. So we're most excited about that. Well, wasn't that refreshing, Deborah? Um, it was certainly illuminating. Um, once, a, once again, a, um, a very thick, multicolored booklet was handed to all the commissioners and everybody that was, was standing in the, or sitting up front. Uh, they, they even tried to hand some all the way down to the clerk of court and, and uh, they wanted everybody to have a copy of that. And um, what we got again was um, Cindy Anderson giving her typical speech of, well, you have to have it in the pipeline to get it out of the pipeline. And uh, folks, look, it, 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 it never fails. You can go back, and we've talked about it forever at Santa Rosa Week TV. When someone starts questioning Team Santa Rosa, all of a sudden, Hundreds into the thousands of jobs are on the table. Yes. Okay. Right. They had in a in a slide presentation, they showed. Uh, I don't know what the what the total was, but it was three to five thousand jobs was. Any day that now. They're in a in a pipeline. Any day now. Any day. Any any day. Good paying jobs. Any good good paying jobs. Good paying jobs. You know, you folks just y'all just hang on. Uh, after after nine years, we're finally going to do something. And, and I want to remind you, uh, you folks, of, of something. One of the first big pushes that was ever made in Santa Rosa County goes all the way back to about 2003, I think it was. Operation Bluebird for the aviation park. We were promised 800 jobs at $75,000 a year and up. In the aviation park, still sitting there with trees on it. <coughs> over and over and over, the news media has participated in this, where it's 800 jobs. Uh, uh, for goodness sakes, the Pensacola News Journal, uh, on four different occasions, said 800 jobs four different times. Channel 3 participated in it twice. 800 jobs, multiple construction jobs, and da-da-da-da, on and on and on and on. And, and so whenever the level of heat gets up, well, all of a sudden we have all this in the pipeline and this is, this is coming and just, you, you know, you bear with us, you bear with us, you bear with us. And, you know, please, that, that, that's, that's not what we need right now. What we need is the board of directors of Team Santa Rosa to fulfill the wishes of the board of county commissioners, the folks who signed the checks to Team Santa Rosa. They've made it very clear that they want new leadership and they want the name changed. Uh, it's even got to the point now where county commissioners are recognizing at county commission meetings that, that the name Team Santa Rosa is not a good name in our community. And, uh, you know, so, so another dog and pony show. Oh, here's all these, uh, these, the, the, it's, it's, you, you know, you got to have them in the pipeline to get them out of the pipeline. You got to have them in the pipeline so to get close. them out of it. We're, we're so right close. there. We're right there. We're right there. You know, and Dave. It's a good thing we bought that pulling property. Uh, yeah, exactly. And Dave Hawksing sitting there going right along. You know, he's like the, um, well, what what's the head? What's the guy at the circus? The the ring. The ringmaster. Yeah, the ringmaster. He's like the ringmaster now. Mm. You know, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and here. Cindy's here today. She's gonna tell you all the things that that, that that's gonna happen. It's gonna happen, and uh, you know it, it it continues to amaze me. Um, you know, I, look, I'm not falling for it anymore. Of note, ladies and gentlemen. Of note, and I think this is a, a, an important distinction, it appears to me that the print media and Channel 3 News didn't rush out to do a story about the 2,500 jobs that's on their way. They have been completely silent this time. Something tells me a couple of FBI subpoenas. <laughs> <right>. <laughs> 
<laughs> have something to do with that. Maybe, maybe my repeated emails to some of the writers mm -hmm. and, and the uh, and the on air personalities. Yeah. They finally learned their lesson that just because the director of economic development, Cindy Anderson, tells you something, don't necessarily make it so. Yeah. And uh, so even at the presentation, you know, I. I well, their credibility has now been impugned. I mean, it's it's more than just reporting on something that never happens. It's people starting to question, why don't you ever ask questions about this stuff? Right, exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, I can't imagine. I'll tell you some folks. At Santa Rosa Week TV, folks can tell us whatever they want to tell us, but you can bet your bottom dollar we're going to ask questions. We're going to verify. We're going to account. We're going to make sure of anything before we talk about it on this TV show. And uh, the, the continued promise, it, it just, you know, how long are we going to drag this ridiculous mess out? A uh, little bit longer. Just, just unbelievable. Um, uh, you know, the board, of, the board of directors of Team Santa Rosa needs to step up to the plate, follow the, follow the wishes of the Board of County Commissioners. Plain and simple. Because it is my belief that uh, if they don't in the near future, the funding is going to be cut for Team Santa Rosa. And, and, and the one guy that, that's trying to be, he wants to engage and he wants to do this, Dave Hawksing, he should understand that if there's no funding, there's no board. There's no nothing. You know, and... and um, it just it just continues to be a mess, folks. Um, I think I think uh, Santa Rosa Week TV has pointed out over and over and over the shortcomings of Team Santa Rosa, and it's nothing personal. <laughs> where are the jobs? Come on, Deborah. Where, yeah, where are they? Where where where, where yeah. are the jobs? You know, over just, and just over. Just over the next bridge. Yeah, it it's it, it, look where. We're all we're almost there, folks. We're, we're we're almost there, folks. We're almost there, folks. And um, well, I, I think it's clear by now you can't engineer something like that, especially in a bad economy. I mean, so you throw good money after bad money that could go towards roads and you know other kinds of improvements that might help commerce develop in the area. Well, well it's just being flushed on the toilet. One of, one of the one of the suggestions that that Cindy Anderson made to the Board of County Commissioners is. We want to increase the payouts that we give per job. It's unbelievable. Okay. And, and uh, you know, uh, Commissioner Lichard stood up and he said, uh, well, I would like to point out to you, Miss Anderson, that we have a finite amount of dollars, and if you give it all away in incentives, we don't have any money to put in infrastructure. But here's the thing. is the incentive money they're talking about is so small... In comparison, if you're talking about a real business that's got establishing a real industry and making real profits, it's a it's a, it's a fairly it's not a huge amount to begin with. But if you're talking about scam artists <laughs> who are coming in there specifically to collect incentive money, then you're just you're just right. opening the door to um, to flushing it down the toilet. I tell you to what, waste, I, fraud, I, waste, and abuse. I tell you what we have in Santa Rosa County that. We, we spend all of our time, uh, you know, the, our current economic development, we want to go poach jobs from the, from the four corners of the planet. And, uh, you know, the, the bottom line is we have a good education system. We're turning out. We have a good university system. Certainly they both could be tweaked a little bit, but, but we're turning out some awful good students. Um, we have plenty of property available. Uh, for, for companies to move here. And we spend all of our time going to South America and running up to Washington, D.C., or, or hoping this and hoping that, and uh, it, it, it's, it's a complete and utter failure. Yeah. And uh, now, now we have a board of directors for Team Santa Rosa that, as far as I'm concerned, they're thumbing their nose at the Board of County Commissioners. I mean, I... I spoke with Commissioner Lynchard after the county commission meeting. I, uh, you know, in my conversation with Commissioner Lynchard, I, I, you know, I said they're they're playing you, Commissioner Lynchard. I, I was there. You 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 gave direction. And uh, well, see, I and I will tell you, I honestly didn't get that impression from that meeting that I went to, that board of directors meeting. 
what, what I got from the board, the directors that were the, who had attended, and there were a lot who just didn't even come, which is, you know, in past meetings I've been to, they've almost all been there. What I got was you have people who had a sense that this organization was somehow going to improve the economy in the area, and they were, I'm sure many of them were participating in good faith, and I think what they got now is kind of a realization what this organization has been doing is it has been um, uh, serving as the off-site facilitator for stuff the county commission doesn't want you to know they're doing. Mm -hmm. And then when, it, when all that stuff comes to light, then they're there to serve as the buffer and the whipping boy for the <laughs> county commission. And I think some of these board members have suddenly figured out that's what this thing is supposed to do. It's doing it, and they're getting the whipping. And right. Why are we even here? Why are we bothering at this point? Well, it's 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 just a it's just a mess. And 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 folks, look, I was, uh, you know, I I was very patient. I waited till the end of the county commission meeting, and uh, uh, you're gonna you're gonna see my comments now. But but I told the board of county commissioners that I was confused. I didn't understand. I didn't understand what had just happened. Yeah. Um. Of course, I think some of us uh, who have been who have been watching Team for several years now, um, uh, the impression is that there's a lot of public money that goes in and then it's redistributed to private um, and some might say special interests. And um, uh, one of the things we've heard uh, uh, mentioned a lot today, this morning uh, in the meeting, and also this this afternoon a little bit, is the concept of quality of life. And um, I would just note that um, one of the cornerstones of uh, quality of life. Is, um, is cost of living, uh, which is <clears throat> somewhat high in this area for the uh, for the uh, income levels. I think the median income is actually about twenty four thousand. The median median salary, excuse me, in this area. And um, I just wondered, <clears throat> I wanted to ask Team Santa Rosa, uh, as part of their uh, role as a, as a public private entity. I know that uh, we've heard this morning uh, one of the one of the private interests that they that they uh, seem to have a very close working or relationship with is Gulf Power, and I wondered, um, as part of their public-private role, if they're doing anything to um, to work with Gulf Power to get them to reduce their uh, their ridiculous electricity rates. I wondered if that would be if that would be part of their their, their role. Can, can y'all answer that? I don't think that's seen. Okay, thank role. you. Thank you. That's a tough one to call. 